Hello. In this video, I'm going to cover how to prepare your GSS data download for analyses in Excel. As you can see, I've already opened up my GSS data download file, and you can see my 11 variables uh, with their variable names across the top here. Again, we have one row for each participant. Um, and what we want to do right now, the focus here is some variable, some recoding of the data. So for one, we're um, going to want to make these uh, codes instead of the labels for each category. We're going to want to put them into uh, number codes. It's pretty easy, you'll see. Uh, but before we recode our data, we want to take care of a couple of other uh, issues in this data set so that we can analyze it most easily for our inferential statistics and our descriptive statistics we'll do in the next videos. So the first step here is that we're going to want to, you're going to want to go to insert on your ribbon, insert ribbon here, and click table. Excel is going to ask where is the data for your table, but it will automatically see your um, data, the appropriate area of the data set as part of the table and you want to make sure to leave checked this box that says my table has headers. These are the headers here in row one and that will help you identify your variables later. So let's go ahead and click OK, create a table and look at this. Now we have this easier looking table and I'm going to reduce the view size so it's a little easier for you to see the whole scope and I'm just adjusting the zoom here. Uh, so you can see all my variables are still in here, the data set's still the same, but it's put it in a table format and there's a couple of additional benefits here. Uh, so <clears throat> for one, when you've got it in a table format, it's easy you have it's obviously easier to see the data layout. But even more important than that is this drop down arrow here where you have really conveniently located the sorting options for each variable row and it will sort the data appropriately. So you can also see if you look down in the <clears throat> this box here it shows us the different values that are actually in this variable and you can see that there's a number of variable values here no, no answer, not applicable, and yes. And so what we're going to want to do is eliminate the respondents who selected no answer or not applicable. This is a way of dealing with missing data and uh, it's the, the simplest way to deal with missing data, arguably not appropriate for every circumstance, but uh, for our purposes this is uh, just deleting missing cases is a fine way to address it um, and also the GSS data set doesn't tend to have many uh, missing cases except where maybe uh, respondents didn't get a certain module or another. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and remember we're in this column B here. The variable is told have depression. Was the respondent told they have depression? Let's go ahead and sort that. If I sort it A to Z, then it'll uh, sort it no, no answer, not applicable. I can sort it in the opposite direction. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's going to collapse all of my values together. Again, to highlight our cases that have no answer and not applicable, I'm going to sort from A to Z here. And I want to scroll down to the first instance where I see the, a participant who has responded with uh, no answer. In this case, will be first. No answer. So I want to delete all instances of participants that did not answer. So highlight the whole row. Highlight the row you select over here in the numbers, um, or the row numbers. Select down and right click in this area and delete. Okay. The next group we're going to delete, just to help you see this a little bit, are the not applicable. We want to delete all these cases too, and there's many, many more of these cases because the 
um, when not applicable shows up, it generally means that a participant was not administered the, uh, the module that this item was in. So, of course, we want to delete them from the data set that, uh, and you can see, once you get scrolling kind of fast, it can be a little hard to stop, but you can always go back up. And here I've highlighted all of the not applicable cases. I want to make sure to stop at this border here, right-click inside the area, and delete. So now I'm left with, in this variable called have depression, I can see that I have just two, I should have just no and yes. Let's see here what the blanks are. I'm going to sort A to Z. If I sort Z to A, uh, I'm unsure why there should be any blank data at all. So I don't think there really is. I'm not worried about that. So we click this. We can see there's yes, no. Let's see. If we want to see what's happening in the blanks, I can uncheck yes and no. And I can see, oh, it's these cases that I deleted before. Now I'll go back. I want to see all the responses where participants said yes and no, and here we go. Okay, so that's how we'll clean up this variable here and uh, eliminate the yes and no responses. The next step is that we need to recode these responses so that it reflects the codes that are in the variable set. Now, this sounds scary, but it's really pretty easy to do. Let's look at the codes. Uh, the variable name here is depression, depressed. That's the one we're interested in. Nine was no answer. We deleted those. Eight was don't know. Uh, neither of those are, you know, or they correspond to our not applicable and don't know. Um, and what we want to do now is recode any time where it says yes to be a one and no to be a two. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to highlight this column, and here in the Home ribbon, on the far right, you can Find and Select. Click that and go down to Replace. Find what? Let's find Yes, and replace it with 1. Replace All. Okay. Now we'll do the next one, which is to find the No's, and replace them with 2. all that seems right. It made uh, 1024 replacements and we can close this and just visually verify this by looking at our variable. We can see here if we click the drop down now instead of yes and no we have one and two and we know that one is yes and two is no. Okay, And that's how you recode your variables. Now you don't have to recode all your variables just recode the variables you're interested in analyzing. So let's say that for my analyses, uh, my first set of analyses, I'm going to do look at whether or not participants have been told they have a depression and its effect uh, on condition of health. So I need told have depression to be recoded into this uh, number, into the code format. I need to do the same thing with condition of health. And note that we're tailoring this file to this spreadsheet to our one data analysis. So for each set of analyses you do, you're going to want to have a new copy of your MyGSS data download. And so while we're thinking about it, I'm going to go and save this as uh, a new file, MyGSS data download. You can see here I've used our standard naming convention, and this is my... Um, set for <clears throat> depression and health. Okay. I just want to be able to ascertain this, the difference between this set and the other. Um, you're going to want to use your original GSS data download each time you, oh, each time you do a set of analyses. So if you're doing the extra credit set, you're going to want to start over with your data download and clean up those variables separately. The reason for that is that we're deleting the missing cases. So you can see I got this com compatibility checker error. It's not a big deal. I need to cancel out and instead of just saving this as an XLS file, I need to save it as a XLS 
X file. Uh, so again, I'm just going to name it set. Depression and alt. Okay. <clears throat> and so just to go over the process one more time about deleting the missing cases and recoding the variables, let's look at my other variable of interest, which in this case is condition of health. So that's in column C. I'm going to, I can see from looking here that I've got several values, don't know, excellent, fair, good, not applicable, poor. Okay, well obviously I want to get rid of not applicable and don't know. So let's go ahead and sort our variables. There's only two that said don't know, so those are easy to delete. And let's go find our other group that we want to delete. Not applicable. It's a little easier to scroll through a large page when you have the zoom down pretty far. So I'm going to do that. As you can see, it makes it smaller, but I can see lots of cases more easily. And it's easier to scroll through these. I'm at the end of my not applicable cases. And let's go ahead and delete those. Now if I go back up to the top, my variable here, condition of health. Let's see the values. I have the expected values, which are excellent, fair, good, and poor. Now let's convert each of these values to its appropriate code in the data set. To do that, let's check the codes. The codes for health are 1 is excellent, 2 is good, 3 is fair, and 4 is poor. So again, we can just go in our home ribbon here, all, all the way to the right, to find and select, click that, and go to replace. Let's make sure we have our column highlighted before we click Replace. And I want to replace the first value, which was excellent, with the code 1. Okay, let's replace good with its appropriate code, which is 2. Oops. 2. Replace all. We're almost there. Let's replace fair with its code. 3. Great. In this case, we like to hear that sound from Windows. And our last one, the value 4, should be replaced with the code 4. Great. And we can see when we go back up to the top of our table that this variable now has the codes 1, 2, 3, 4 corresponding to our, our coding in the data set. Okay. And now I'm done preparing this spreadsheet for analyses and I will go over how to do the specific descriptive and inferential statistics for this type of variable pairing that is a nominal predictor and an interval outcome in one of our next videos. Check it out. Thanks for listening.